This is a presentation showing how HAIR's privacy aware framework, together with blockchain logging, can be used to provide fine grained access control to fire data, together with non reputable logging in our Norwegian healthcare scenario. The problem we are addressing is how to control access data based on policy rules. This goes well beyond simple role based access control. Access policy may be based on the geographical location of the requester, the intent of use of the data, and on categorization of the data itself. For example, differentiating between sensitive and non-sensitive portions of the data. Our solution is based around the concept of separating policy decision and enforcement from application logic. This is necessary since policies may change and there may be a large number of microservices involved in a workflow. Embedding policy enforcement into every microservice is a sure recipe for data leakage. In the HAIR Policy Aware framework, we take advantage of cutting edge technologies, such as Kubernetes and Istio, to provide security and orchestration. While today's service meshes control the flow of service to service communication, we have created an analogous data mesh to control the flow of data between services. We base the policy aware framework on IBM's open source Fibric project, which uses open source components such as the open policy agent, known as OPA, to handle policy definition and decision, and Kubernetes, Istio, and Docker containers. To show how the privacy aware framework could be deployed in a hospital, we can envision three roles. The hospital's data governance officer, shown on the right, the hospital's IT support group, shown on the left, and the data requester or data scientist, shown on the bottom. This is typically a third party who is requesting the data for analysis. To configure the privacy aware framework, the data governance officer needs to catalog the data sources available for third party access. In our example, this will be the hospital's fire server. Additionally, the data governance officer will need to categorize portions of the fire data, such as sensitive or personally identifiable information, or PII, as well as the policy for accessing the data resource typically taking the data categorization into account. The hospital IT department will deploy a human-readable YAML file, which defines which Fibric modules are available in the system. Fibric modules essentially act as the intermediary between the data requester and the data source, or sync, handling format and protocol issues, as well as providing the redaction requests required by the policies. Finally, the data requester will need to submit a YAML known as a Fibric application to request access to a specific data source. In the use case, a third party data requester, shown on the left, authenticates to the hospital system and is returned to JSON Web Token or JWT. As will be explained, this JWT will be automatically attached to every request the user makes. The privacy aware framework securely locks down access to the hospital's fire server. All access must go through an ingress gateway, which first checks the validity of the JWT and then redirects the request to the privacy aware framework. The privacy aware framework evaluates the policy decision for the request as well if the requester is allowed to access this data path. If both conditions are met, it proxies the request to the fire server, receives the reply, applies any policy dictated filtering on it, and then returns the results to the user. The request and the ensuing decision are logged to Kafka and then picked up by the blockchain logging mechanism. The Fibric open architecture can be conceptualized as being composed of a control plane and a data plane. The control plane consists of third-party services, such as OPA for policy decision, Vault for secrets management, and others. These services are pluggable, and by use of fiber connectors, can be replaced by other services that an organization might already be using. In our healthcare demo, we are going to show an implementation of the privacy-aware framework which provides fine-grained access control to fire data stored in a hospital's fire system. FHIRE is a widely used standard defining the electronic communication of healthcare data between systems, 
and it models a wide range of healthcare topics as fire resources, such as a resource describing a patient, another resource describing observations from a medical test, and so on. In our demo, we will show how we can protect data both at a resource level and even at the level of individual attributes within resources. Let's now take a brief look at what the configuring YAML files for running our policy-aware framework look like. The data asset YAML is typically used by the data governance officer to define a data resource, which in our case will be the fire server. In this example, as you can see in the blue box, the data officer has tagged the ID attribute as PII and tagged the patient resource to be of type blockable. The actual actions to be taken on these tagged items will be determined by the policy. Now we see an example of a policy definition, specified in a language called Rego. This policy will cause the Fibric Policy Manager to return a decision of redact column on the fire attribute that was categorized as PII. This YAML defines a Fibric module for a connection between a fire source and JSON output. It's also advertising the redaction items that it knows how to do, such as redact column or block resource. Finally, the Fibric application YAML is submitted by the data requester to get an access point to the fire data. In this example, the requester specifies for whom the access is being created, which may be a person, an organization, a role, etc., the intended use of the data, and the data asset being requested. Again, in this case, the FHIR database that the Data Governance Officer already registered. It is the submission of this YAML file to the policy-aware framework that causes the fiber control to configure the data plane for the specific requester. As shown in the fiber application slide, data paths are created on behalf of a specified entity. All requests for data will appear as standard FHIR REST requests but need to have a JWT attached to the request header. The JWT encodes the name of the data requester and needs to match the name used in the Fibric application. All requests for data are logged by the Privacy Aware Framework to a Kafka message queue, where they are read by the blockchain logging component. Logged information records the query that was issued, the time it was issued and by whom, the policy that was applied to the return data, and the outcome decision of the request, among other things. The outcome decision can be either authorized when a requester has both supplied a matching name in the JWT and is not blocked from accessing the requested resource, unauthorized when the name in the JWT does not match the name used in the Fibric application to create the data path, or restricted, meaning that the JWT name is correct but policy prevents the user from accessing the requested resource. Note that a request that is authorized may still be subject to data redaction. In this video, we will see the Policy Aware Framework in action. This is a FHIR request for all observation resources. Note that the JWT is included in the header. As we see, this query returns the observations from the FHIR server. However, since the Data Governance Officer tagged the ID field as PII and then defined a policy to redact all PII fields, we can see that the Policy-Aware Framework automatically handles the redaction of this field in the return data. Here we are emulating what would happen if a requester with a mismatching name in the JWT attempts to request data. The request is blocked with a user authentication fails message. Here we see how the definition of the data asset defines the patient resources as blockable. We have a policy in place that blocks access to all blockable resources. When a FHIR request for patient resources is issued, the request is failed with a resource blocked by policy message.
We will now see a demo showing what is logged in the three different access requests previously shown. The yellow window shows the JSON being written out to Kafka. The following demonstration shows how a data scientist using the Privacy Aware framework can consume the data returned in the previous presentations. What you can see on the screen is the interface of a Jupyter notebook that data analysts can use to perform ad hoc analysis of data stored in the HL7 Fire server. Access to the Jupyter notebook is secured via the authentication backend using Keycloak. Once a data scientist logs in, Keycloak issues a JWT that is bundled with requests against the HL7 Fire server that are executed through the Privacy Aware framework. In this demo, the data scientist is fetching observation resources into a data frame, which is a standard method for flexibly and intuitively storing and working with data. As can be observed, some of the data columns returned to the table have been redacted, meaning that instead of actual data, you see a predefined value, defined as multiple X characters in this demo. That is the Privacy Aware Framework in action, which validated the supplied JWT and correctly redacted the data, based on policies that the Data Governance Officer defined in the YAML file. Once the data is loaded into a data frame, a data scientist can perform standard operations, such as filtering based on observation type or filtering over a given time period. In the example we're presenting here, the data scientist selects only CGM measurements that have been recorded after a specific date. It is also possible to use visualization tools to create a graphical representation of the data, such as the plot that is visible on the screen right now. IT services, devices, infrastructure, applications, and their users are creating a constant flow of events that need to be monitored and logged. There are many systems that rely on auditing mechanisms to identify security incidents and threats. The main advantage of audit trails is that they can serve as tangible proofs when disputes arise regarding serious issues, such as abuse of permissions, illegal access attempts, systematic or not, and the improper disclosure of patients' health data. However, there are issues that always need to be addressed to ensure the effectiveness and trustworthiness of an auditing process, like the confidentiality and integrity of the managed audit trails. While confidentiality can be achieved by a properly set up access control mechanism, integrity can be inherently achieved by adopting the advantages of a blockchain-based solution. The blockchain-based auditing mechanism for HAIR is designed to provide the following. Tracking of who accessed what data over time and for what purpose. An immutable, tamper-proof record of all patient data access attempts. Audit log isolation per medical institution, while still enabling scenarios for cross-organization auditing. A filtering mechanism for the identification of malicious unauthorized access attempts and a timeline of events in the form of abnormal data access requests. The HAIR auditing mechanism is based on Hyperledger Fabric, a well-known and enterprise-mature framework for the development of private, permissioned blockchain applications. It allows for both isolated, single-organization, or even cross-organization auditing. The HAIR auditing mechanism is equipped with a client application that provides a REST API, and a Kafka interface to achieve integration with the Privacy Aware framework. 
All smart contract invocations trigger and or manipulate the blockchain's functionalities like storing, querying, and filtering logs and are achieved by a spring-based client application. The auditing mechanism manages audit logs that include the request timestamp, the requester user ID, the query, the policy decision outcome, the client IP, the data access request intent, the data access request outcome, the asset ID, and the complete log generated by the Hare Privacy Aware Framework encrypted with AES. For the remainder of the Hare project, our aim is to further enhance the audit log structure. Beginning with the log metadata, these will include distinctive but non-sensitive data fields from the original PAF log, which will be used for filtering and querying. The complete log coming from the Privacy Aware Framework will be encrypted with a symmetric key that can be used once and then discarded. The same symmetric key will be encrypted with the organization-owned asymmetric or public key, forming the encrypted key field. Fabric users with appropriate access rights are provided the asymmetric key from the certificate authority and will not only be able to view, but also decrypt the audit logs. The current developed auditing mechanism for a single hair use case is presented in this figure. The main components of the auditing mechanism are, among others, the organization, where the auditing mechanism is deployed, chain code, which refers to the smart contract or the program code that implements the application logic. This constitutes the central part of a distributed application in Fabric as it determines the blockchain's transactions functionalities. The implemented smart contract supports the creation of assets and various queries and filtrations on the stored assets. The user can perform various combinations of queries based on time range, user ID, outcome, and intent. The hair channel is the logical channel where the chain code is implemented and logs reside, and CA service is responsible for user management aspects, such as user certificates, user registration, user enrollment, and user revocation. The auditing mechanism, Client App, acts as an entry point to the underlying blockchain network, offering REST API and Kafka connectivity. While the first offers filtering capabilities, the latter interface receives the privacy-aware framework-generated logs, subsequently invoking the storage functionality of the deployed smart contract. The auditing mechanism's client application offers a rich REST API for external clients to query or filter the stored logs, essentially exposing the underlying smart contracts embedded functionalities. The REST API is also fully extensible, depending on the auditing requirements. A potential extension on the current blockchain network could be the addition of more organizations with physical and logical ledger independence via the adoption of isolated, dedicated fabric channels. The cross-organization communication could be achieved by one central channel that would store hair-specific audit logs or other information that should be stored on a shared ledger. The configuration of such a system would require specific user management and access control policies on a per-channel basis. Next steps and advances of the auditing mechanism in the context of HAIR include integration of the auditing mechanism with the other HAIR use cases, functionality split of existing base smart contracts into two parts, where one contract will manage all the read actions and the other contract will manage all the create operations. While the create contracts can be only accessed by internal system users, an access control scheme can be built around the read contracts. Integration of the auditing mechanism with the HAIR Observatory. And complete authentication and authorization integration between HAIR and the underlying Fabrics user management scheme. Finally, we will be investigating blockchain-based patient consent, incorporated in the auditing mechanism. In this video, we are going to watch the flow of incoming Kafka messages, as well as the procedure of storing them in the auditing mechanism. The client app recognizes the Kafka message and invokes the create log functionality of the smart contract to store the incoming log to the auditing mechanism after having extracted the required information. Examples of authorized, 
unauthorized, and restricted logs for one user will be presented. We also prepared a Jupyter Notebook to present a timeline of events based on the logs that are already stored in the blockchain auditing mechanism. The procedure to create these timelines is to query the logs via our API's REST endpoints, and then prepare the retrieved data to be presented in diagrams. Two REST API's functionalities are triggered, one that returns all stored logs, and one that returns all stored logs for a specific user and for specific request outcome. 